the host on this occasion, I think, is, is too strong a term, but uh, in the name of the community that I represent here in Birmingham, I give you warm greetings and many welcomes for those who are visitors to this city. I bring you greetings not just in the name of the Bishop of Birmingham, for whom I work, but also through him in the name of all the Christian communities here in this city. You will be aware, of course, that our city has changed enormously in the last 40 or 50 years, and we are anticipating much greater change in the next 20 or 30 years. And so we are living in very exciting times in this city as we are learning new ways to be one city, one community of humanity here, but with many different faiths represented, many different cultures, many different ways of being human. But ultimately there is only one humanity, and therefore we have much to learn one from another. And so we rejoice in this diversity in our midst. We in England and indeed in Europe, we need a great deal the wisdom of how to live with diversity and yet with one common humanity. Because our European history of dealing with religious diversity has not been good. You will know that through many centuries, the last 500 years especially, our history of dealing with difference even within our own Christian community has been far from an ideal, far from a model of one common humanity. And so we need to learn, and we need to learn from the spiritual wisdom of other faith traditions. And so the message that I bring to you is that each one of us have a very important role to play in shaping the future of our city. Because a city like Birmingham is today and like it will be in 20 or 30 years time, has never before existed in Europe. We have never before had a city like this, and what it will be like depends a great deal on how much we can all work together as people of faith, as people with a vision, to create a society here which is fit and worthy for human beings to live, and something that we can live to our children and our grandchildren. And so I welcome you all very much, and I pray that you will share with us your spiritual wisdom in order to help us to learn how better we can live in unity here and respecting our diversity. I thank you very much. This is the next church I'm going to introduce. It's one because they're closest to the microphone, so no one feel in English, please. <laughs> and two, they're very, very good friends of mine. Um, this is a wonderful community known as the Ahmadiyya Muslim Association. And we have both their national representatives and their local representatives here. They have invited me to their programs, and they have treated me like a king. And I'm very much impressed with their very strong faith and their very progressive understanding of the Quran, who by their association I actually read uh, for the first time in my life. So it gives me great pleasure to introduce Tahir Selby as the speaker representing. Also my dear friend uh, Zedemir is here and Vizier. We know each other for a long time, but we will ask Tahir to come to such meetings to find out about different people, different ways, different customs and so on and so forth. As Jeff has told you, we were delighted that he was able to come to our meeting and when he invited us, we were delighted to come here to meet you all and it's a great pleasure for us to come and to meet you and to learn from your ways and what you do. 
we have in our community one saying which is love all happy for none. And I'm sure this is something which we can all strive for because everyone wants peace. But the best way of achieving peace is to learn about each other. When we have these barriers, that creates hatred. So this sort of meeting where you invited guests to come to meet you is a very good way of breaking down those barriers. And I appreciate that and I'm very pleased that you've given us this invitation to come. So thank you very much. We also have Elder and Sister Hunter of the Church of Jesus Christ of the Latter-day Saints. They have a strong speaking, a preaching spirit. All over the world, I've been in so many countries, and I've always met a representative of their church. <coughs> Happy to see the Thank you. We are honored to be invited as guests here tonight. We express from our presidency of the Western Europe area their regards, their best wishes. Unable to be here tonight, but they sent with us their regards. We appreciate the courtesies that we have received over the years from your people, and we wish you the very best as you celebrate your festival. We don't totally understand your culture and your methods of worship, but what we do understand is a universal language, and that universal language is love, peace, devotion, and respect. And we have that for you, and we feel that we're sitting at the feet of a great leader. Welcome to this area. And At the risk of committing the offense of omission, I'm introducing our last guest. And if there was anyone else I was supposed to introduce, to this, please forgive my offenses now. But we have um, from the Interfaith Peace Workers of Birmingham, Susan Holliday, and uh, she is always working with us with this community and diversity, which we also speak to. Her.
different religions all working together. But how this will actually have some real fruition is when there's real spiritual guidance. So it's very nice that the mayor, he himself is coming here because this is acknowledgement of the necessity for that spiritual guidance which is needed in all sectors of life, especially amongst those who are taking political um, responsibility. In the Vedic um, history, we see that the leaders, the rishis, the um, kings, rajas, they're called um, raja rishis. They were kings, but at the same time, they were um, highly involved transcendentalists. That they always took advice from the religious leaders. And in this way, they were able to rule over their kingdoms um, with their political expertise, but at the same time, understanding that the real welfare for the people was their spiritual um, elevation. If we have a society of um, people that have so much diversity, economic development, good um, material facilities, but at the same time, there's not that spiritual um, understanding, that spiritual basis which is there, then ultimately, that society will crumble. It will not last. Because that which brings moral value in a very substantial way is coming from that spiritual substance. So, my message is that leaders of community here, that we come together and we see how we can take from each other those spiritual principles which are universal to all and understand that ultimately that we all have one source. There's one God. Whether you call him Allah, Jehovah, Yahweh, my country, Nigeria, we say Chineke, Olorum, um, different names, but one God. And ultimately, the source of achieving that God is the process of love, the process of devotion. Different names and different religious paths, but Bhakti. And this is universal. So wherever that fruit of love of God is there, regardless of what external traffic that it has, then we should take that. We should judge a tree by the fruits. Where practicing a particular religious process, we see that, that um, those people practicing, they're actually developing real qualities, real safety qualities, safe qualities of love of God. That also, along with these safety qualities, then there's truthfulness, peacefulness, equanimity, these secondary qualities are coming, then we should honor that and we should, we should see how we can learn from that and also progress. We should not be so much stuck on the external trappings, but we should deal with the essence. Mr. Opishama said the word Dharma. That Dharma means that intrinsic quality which is there from the makeup of um, a substance. Just like the Dharma of water is liquidity, the Dharma of fire is heat. So the Dharma of the living entity, the living entity is not black, the living entity is not white, the living entity is not Hindu, the living entity is not Muslim, the living entity is not Christian, but the living entity is a minute part and parcel of that Supreme Presence of God, whether you call it Allah, Buddha, Jehovah, Yahweh, what have you. And the intrinsic nature is to love. And that loving propensity is manifest through service. So we can all learn together how we can love how we can serve that one God. And by watching the root of the tree, meaning what, serving God, then ultimately we'll be doing um, service to humanity. But if we do so much service to humanity, but we don't water the root of the tree, if we water the leaves, if we water the, the branches, if we even water the trunk, uh, then the tree will not survive. We have to see how we can water the, tr the, the root. And this is Dharma. This is the Dharma of the living entity to develop this love for God. So I'm very happy that we're all coming, especially Worshipful Mayor. Uh, and we hope that we can also give something to you that you'll be able to take and utilize in helping the people of this um, very nice city of Birmingham. Thank you very much.
राय Perhaps you know that my English is broken. I can speak very well in Indian languages. But if you want to hear my broken English, then I will speak. But you should understand the meaning yourself. I am very happy. That you have all managed, all representing of all community in Brahm, from 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 especially mayor. He represents from top to bottom, everyone. So I think that all are here from Brahm. <laughs> Brahm. 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 Also representative of India. Of general, most later is he. So Indian all are here. <laughs> also, I am happy that the representative of Christianity of our Sanatan Dharmist, my brother Muslims, Sikhs, and all are here. I heard them, and I become very happy. Universal or unity in diversity. I heard. I also appreciate my own Prakash Ji that nothing to tell me. He has tell every told everything that I want to tell. <laughs> Because he is a learned person, he knows he has just studied Indian scriptures. At this day, I became happy that he quoted something from our Veda Upanishads, and he told that every anywhere which has had not written Hindu word, even in Veda, Sanatan, Arya, like this. So someone may think that we are sectarians, but never. We believe that we are in the family of one God. All humans, not only humans, someone think that all humans are oh the family of God. But I think even rushes, plants, creepers, animals, fishes, all created by God and all are children of the same one God. So why we should not have love and affection for all creepers, cows, animals, hogs, sheep, and not only humans, but we see that so many good instructions in Vedas, in Quran side, in Bible, but we do disobey to some extent. We think that all the animals and birds and uh, money to take money. There should be no love and affection. He told that God is love. Love is God. In Indian, by the culture, it has been everywhere. Sarve Sukhina Havan. He quoted that. All should be happy. But all, not only humans, but even creepers, all animals, hawks, pigs, and fishes, all. 
because I told you that all they are in assembly of same God. And as it told that there is no so many go gods, supreme law. One even as it told God, Allah, Khuda, uh, Brahma, Bhagavan and other party, Jave and same. But according to language and different of oh, the cultures. Oh, he has been called. Allah means what is the meaning of Allah? Oh, greatest. Brihat. Brihatva, Brihnatva. Who is the most one? In him all creation, all universe are there. In his every pore of pore? Skin. Oh, land, millions and millions of universe. In a moment he can destroy all universe. And in a moment he can create new and new millions of universe. So if we had love to same God, then try to quarrel. Same God, one God, but we are quarrel. We don't know what is love and affection. If there will be affection and love for one God, then we should have love to each other. And that is why it has been told. Sarve, Sukhna, all should be. But who is all? Also in Veda, it has been told. Veda means don't you think that in Hindus and his Veda means knowledge. What knowledge? Who, we, who are we? Who is super soul? What is our relation? What is mortal? It is a bag of urine, latrine and blood and all these things. This is not so. We are not these. <coughs> we are we are part and parcel of the same Supreme Law. Top to bottom, all animals, creepers, or human demigods, all. And his Adhitiyam Ekam Eva Adhitiyam. What we see in this world? Oh, only his expansion. Expansion of his power. So, I think it will be there better that we should know what is happiness. And we should try to follow really Vedas, Bible, Quran Sai and other books. I think the teachings of all are like say some difference of languages. So in Vedas it has been told. Nalpat Subham Bhumayeva Eva Bibijit Bibijyas Tabda Oh, worldly things they cannot give us happiness. Supreme Lord is Oh, Ananda and Ananda Maitu Oh, the essential happiness and he in fact the container of all akhand happiness. Now, being a part and parcel of the same Supreme Lord, we have divided this earth. Oh, this is my country, this is my country. But sun is also one, air is one, everything is one. Then we should also be one unity in diversity. So if Supreme Lord is Ananda man, Ananda, he is happiness and continent of happiness, abode of all happiness. <coughs> then, if we are the children of the same God, then we are also what? what? Same thing, what? That we are also like happiness 
embodiment of all these things. One is the difference between Supreme Lord and we, that he is Vibhu, we are Manu, we are Manu, and he is unlimited, Akhanda Tattva. So we must be like him, but unfortunately we have deviated from that Supreme Law. Now we have forgotten that we, who are we? We think that of this physical body, material body is my shop. And by that, oh, something collected, money, position, gold, or other things, they can make me help, but really this is wrong. Because our body is mortal, all collectively, the, all the scientists and doctors of the whole universe, they cannot stop our old days. You should always rem remind this, remember, that we will have to be one day after 10 years, after 20 years, after 100 years, you will have to be old. All beauty and power will go away. You cannot walk without the help of any stick. And after some time you will die. You can have anything, what you have collected in this world by this body. It will not save you. Only what will see? Say, oh, if you are really serving <coughs> Supreme Law, he is very attractive, he is very handsome, beautiful. I think in Vyagur it has been written, God created man after his own image. What is the meaning? God created man after his own image. If he has no image, then why it is Bible it has been written? But his body is transcendental, not mortal. To some extent, what we think, but it is wrong. Also, God means G-O-D, G generator of this world. O, operator. operator of this world. And D, destructor of the whole world. He nourishes all. He supports all. If he cannot be, he cannot have a form, transcendental form. If he is not merciful, if he is niraka, nirgun, no oh, mercy, then what is the use of Worshipping God, focus God. <laughs> he is, he has power to be, to make a form. He is very merciful. He has created the whole world. Why? Because we were depreciated from. His power, illusory Maya, has kept us in prison of this body and in this. So we should always remember this. In India, in Vedas, in Upanishad, there is a very small upakhyan, like a history. Once, oh, I will tell you. Uh, uh, upakhyan. That once, there is a high class of say that he told Rishi, Muni, his name was Jagdibhav. In the council of a very elevated Janak Maharaj. He was a right soul. He knew, he used to know who am I, Jivatma and Sukhaso. Once he was sitting with his two wives, Maitri and Jagdibhav, Katyayan. He told to his wife, My dear wife, I'm too old. I've collected so much gold, position, cows, so good ashram, abode of living. Now I want to divide it in you, you. I'm giving you, I'm giving, distributing my whole wealth 
property everything into and uh, I have given also children so you should be happy and let me permit that I should go to forest to meditate supreme law. One Kantani told, I am very happy that now you are giving your whole wealth to us and children also you have given and a wife's duty is to help his husband. So if you are going to, going to meditate Supreme Lord, oh, very gladly you can go. But second wife, Maitri told, I have a question. Give an answer and then you can go happy. And she told, you have given, you want to give us gold. Position. You are all well. You are given us children. And you are telling that you should be happy with all these things and let me permit to go to forest. But I, my question is that all these goals, wealth, children, wife, um, and position that you have, they could not give you happiness of your life or they gave. If you are satisfied by that, that they can give me happiness, that as you are telling, then why you are going? For, for, for? And then, oh, Jagya Valkarishi became very happy, embraced her wife, his wife, and told. Oh, certainly, gold, wealth, reputation, any position, are all nasva, mortal, temporary. They cannot give us real happiness of our life. Only this reservoir of our happiness, ananda, by serving his lotus feet, meditating, chanting in this world, and having full uh, faith on him, Anyone can be happy. Anywhere not happiness. Only in the Lord's feet of Supreme Lord there is happiness. If you are chanting, remembering, oh, he may be seen that you should be happy. So in Quran also we see, in Nalaha Kalaka, men surat he. Surat means form. Same thing as the Indian scripture Jesus has, Sate Usamna Vidam Mahagra Arshi. Aho Bhagyam, Aho Bhagyam, Nanda Gopri Yautasam, Jarmitram Paramanandam Purna Brahma Sana. Everywhere in Vedas, Upanishad and Quran, it has been written. That we are all children of oh, one ha happy or happiness that is Supreme.